Okay, so here we have the granite window, so we're going to spin on the surface, just like this. So the piece of technology that we have chosen for this assignment is the charging system. So this charging system consists of three major components. That would be the battery, the alternator, and the voltage regulator. For the cutaway project, we would be mainly focusing on the alternator. So the charging system's major function is to recharge the battery while the vehicle is running and also to provide access voltage to, for all the accessories of the car to run, such as the radio, the headlights, and etc. So the very first component in our charging system is the battery. The battery acts as a storehouse for all the voltage produced by the alternator, which can later be used for cranking or radio or other electronic components of the car. The second component of our charging system would be the alternator, which is also the most important and also can be considered the heart of the charging system. It produces all the necessary voltage required to charge the battery and operate all other electrical equipment in the car. The third component of our charging system is the voltage regulator. The major function of the voltage regulator is to maintain a constant voltage between 13.5 volts to 14.5 volts. This is done so as to prevent the battery from overcharging and to protect the internal electrical components of the vehicle. The alternator works on the basic principle of electromagnetic induction. This principle states that to produce current, we need three essential ingredients which are magnetic field, the conductor, and the movement. The alternator uses these three ingredients to produce current. The next thing we're going to talk about is the components within the alternator. So the first component that we're looking at is the drive end housing. So the drive end housing provides support and aligns the rotor with the stator windings. It also provides an opening for cooling and it's a good mounting point to secure the alternator to the engine. Usually the drive end housing is made up of die cast aluminum. So aluminum is used because it's lightweight, it's non-magnetic, and provides good heat dissipation. The second component of the alternator that we are looking at is the slip ring end housing. The slip ring end housing provides support in alignment to the drive end housing. It also helps in cooling and protection of the alternator. The slip ring end housing contains components such as the brushes, the rectifying diodes, and in most cases, the voltage regulator is also located within the slip ring and housing. This housing is also made up of die cast aluminum. Aluminum is widely used in manufacturing the alternator housings because of its properties such as non-magnetic material, lightweight, and good heat dissipation. The third component of the alternator that we are looking at is the drive pulley. The drive pulley allows the serpentine belt of the engine to rotate the rotor located inside the alternator. The drive pulley is either pressed into the rotor shaft or is held with a nut. Some of the newer model alternator designs also use a one-way clutch. This one-way clutch helps in dampening the vibrations that occur due to the firing pulses. The fourth component of the alternator that we are looking at is the rotor. The rotor is an electromagnet inside the alternator housing. It is made up of a wire coil enveloped around an iron core. The rotor rotates from the mechanical energy that is produced by the engine. The magnetic field surrounding the rotor is the result of its very own rotation. This magnetic field induces a current in the nearby windings. This current is then used to charge the battery after the process of rectification. The fifth component of the alternator that we are looking at is the voltage regulator. Its one and only major function is to regulate the voltage from the alternator. The voltage regulator is responsible for keeping the charging voltage between 13.5 volts to 14.5 volts. And this is done in order to protect the electrical components and electrical circuits throughout the vehicle. Therefore, the voltage regulator is one of the most important part in the alternator. The next component for the alternator is the st stator winding. 
A stator winding is uh, simply the stationary winding uh, in an electric motor for uh, rotary and uh, the linear. The stator is surrounded by the rotor. It is fixed between the uh, drive end and the end slip end house pulley. Uh, and the, the stator can have a two type of configuration. There are three phase and six phase. And the method of connecting the wire are uh, WE and delta. The seventh component of the alternator we are looking at are the rectifying diodes. The rectifying diodes serve the final function in an alternator. As we know that the alternator produces alternating current and that current cannot be stored in the battery, but the rectifying diodes help convert that AC current into direct current, which then can be used to charge the battery. Now that we have looked at the components inside the alternator, we will be looking at its basic principles and the operation. This here is our advanced technology cutaway project. We decided to cut the slip ring and housing and the drive and housing along with the stator windings. After looking at all the components and the operation of the alternator, we will discuss some of its advantages. Initially, dynamos were used to create electrical energy from mechanical energy. Although a dynamo can produce direct current, but they take up more space than the alternators. Also, the alternators are very efficient and their compact size makes it possible to be used in the automotive industry. Some of the other advantages of the alternators include higher output, less maintenance, and more precise output control via the use of the voltage regulators. Without the use of alternators, all the electronic components in the modern car would not be able to work. The alternator works on the basic principle of mutual induction. This principle states that the production of current in a circuit could be the result of a change in current of an adjacent circuit, which is linked to the first circuit only by the flux lines of a magnetic field. Primarily, the rotor is spun from the engine's mechanical energy. At the same time, current is supplied to the rotor shaft. This is done in order to magnetize the rotor. The alternator is designed in such a way that the stator windings are surrounding the moving part, which is the rotor. The rotor is the first circuit and the stator windings are the second circuit. The change in current in the rotor will result in a current produced inside the stator windings through the process of mutual induction. Because the current that is produced in the stator windings is constantly changing directions, it is considered as alternating current. This current cannot be used as such to charge the battery so it has to go through the process of rectification in order to do so. The principle of rectification uses diodes to convert the alternating current into direct current. All of the electronic components of the vehicle operate only on direct current and it is this current that is used to charge the battery.